So I'm here today with Adam Levin of Chuck Levin's Washington Music Center, a staple of the Washington, D.C. area music community since 1958. Uh, you're taking part in a brand new series of um, uh, a brand new series of interviews that we're conducting called Beyond the Artist. So thank you. Welcome, Adam. Thanks for having me. It's brand new. So I've, the title's due to me. I'm sorry. That's great. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, so Beyond the Artist, I mean, I think that uh, one of the one of the things that we both connect on is what an amazing artistic and creative and musical community that the DMV music scene is. Um, but we both know like there are so many pieces that allow that structure to like remain in place from a, um, like an equipment standpoint, a logistics standpoint, a community standpoint. I'd love to talk to you a little bit about um, just kind of like what your overall like vision is for how uh, you and Chuck Levins kind of fits into that infrastructure. Sure. Um, I mean, uh, a, an important part of our world of music are the tools that we use to make that music. I mean, I, I'm not a stickler for using any tools a specific way, but nevertheless, we need tools to make music, um, or at least be creative or they're, they're, they're mechanisms through which that we can be creative. Um, and so. Um, having access to those, knowing what's out there, being able to touch these things, see these things, be part of these things. Um, music store can be an important part of a, of a musician's uh, journey. Um, you know, you get a, a, an instrument can be something that inspires you to create differently or create more or create better or uh, be more creative in a different way. So um, I think in that aspect, you know, you may just think, oh, it's the place I get my picks and strings, but it can it can totally change the trajectory of how someone creates and, and makes music. Um, beyond that, you know, when it comes to recording studios or sound systems or venues or anything else like that, you know, we're a part of that aspect of music, too. So um, understanding, you know, if you're trying to put together a venue or you're going to go play in a venue or you're trying to go on tour and you're trying to figure out how what do I need to kind of... Uh, be ready to uh, explore that next step in my musical journey. There's other aspects of it that you may not know about. That's again, kind of what we're here. So we're kind of like in every step of this journey, as you grow, whether it's your first instrument or you're, you're going on your first tour or you're trying to have your band play their first uh, gig in your garage, or you're going to do your first recording at home or your whatever that step is, there's angles to it that you may not know about and that's where we can kind of come in. So it seems like, you know, you think retail store on one hand, but it's, it's way more than that. It's a repository of information and there's, there's more info in these walls and the brains of the people in this building than I could ever hope to imagine. That's why it's just fun being a part of it. I mean, it certainly uh, sounds like you're defending the staple of the physical location. Uh, you have a beautiful online uh, store uh, at chucklevins.com, but uh, I think you're touching on just the important aspect of how important it is to come in and touch an instrument and to get guidance from people that are playing these instruments and understand the journey this instrument has taken over the years. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, for the local community, for sure, I mean, if you, if you can come in, come on in, because, man, you ever, you can't make music, I mean, you can make music. I, I keep falling because, like, I keep saying, like, you can make music any way you want. You can make music with a computer keyboard and an apple i don't know you can do whatever you want you can be super creative but um coming in and seeing these things is like a visceral like you know uh uh experience so um it's an it's an important step in that in that pathway i think and people don't know what they don't know you know they, they don't know what this thing feels like or looks like or plays like or sounds like until they really do it themselves so when you come into the shop you know you can do this thing but if you're not around you know you call us and we talk we live in this all day so we love to do that too. Like there's, we are a resource no matter where you are. Beautiful. Well, um, aside from the kind of retail aspect, I mean, some of that comes in ways of employment. I mean, I think that uh, you'd certainly appreciate that artists, you know, you have somebody that is working very passionately on your team who then is going to be on the road for the next three months. Is that something that you've run into before? We have. Um, and, you know, it, it, it depends on the role and what it is. Um, it's easy, you know, we know people gig and, and we're always, you know, a, a, a fan of that aspect of it. The the touring side of things always presents a challenge. Um, you know, we've had team members that have gone on tour and, uh, you know, if, if we can work with that, we will. Um, but we certainly have members that are gigging weekly, nightly, 
Um, so there's, you know, we very much know who we are, who we work with, um, what we are and what we are to these people. So, and it's not just the, uh, kind of the team or even the retail, you also do lessons and, uh, and have a number of your own community-based events. So we don't do lessons here, but we sell to all of the, I'll say all of, but many of the teachers, uh, teaching schools, um, uh, places like, uh, you know, you know, Bach to rock or school of rock, um, uh, we work with a lot of the, the school programs and teachers. So we're involved in the learning of music, um, the Levine school of music, whatever it may be like, we're involved in all of those ways of learning music. Um, we, um, we don't do it ourselves. We have no space for that at all. I wish we did. Um, we don't even, we used to have a clinic, a dedicated clinic space where we would do events like that. And these days, just with just how much logistics we've had to do over the last two years, I don't even have that space right now, although we'll still try and do events um, in our store as best we can. Um, we recently had um, a couple a couple pretty great guitar workshops come through the store um, in, the, in more recent months. And we just do in our guitar department. So we'll do workshops and clinics. You know, we'll do things with them. Um, live sound workshops and or recording workshops. Um, we've done virtual workshops before. So we do, we, we do all kinds of things and try and, you know, bring, bring more to the table than just being an outlet for gear. Um, uh, when, whenever we can. Now, I know that of course, like we, we know today that these like kind of multifaceted, multifaceted assets, you know, are keys to success, right? Like building the community and, and maintaining it and educating it. Um, but you, you know, you've kind of grown up with it holistically, right? Like, what was it like coming in at the the ground floor growing up with this, uh, like with this industry? Well, I had a very different upbringing than many probably find their way into it just because like, I, I'm not a musician. I'm so not capable of, of playing music or being musically inclined, although I wish I was. Um, so I come in just from a different, like a more mechanical math brain music is how I like to think of things. Um, but, uh, I, I came from like electrical engineering and stuff like that. So I love the math of music and the way that it all works together and how, uh, I was just talking to someone about speakers and how you can imagine what a wooden speaker sounds like versus a plastic one because of the physics of it. And you can impart that into sound. So that's how I came into it. Um, I didn't know one string from the next string when I started here. So I've learned a lot in the last 13 years, um, but only because of the brain power that exists in this building. So there's like, you know, there's, I, I, there are people that have been here, uh, 40, some 40 plus years, um, in this store. Um, I'm the new guy at 13 years. So <laughs> it's a lot of responsibility for the new guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got to figure out a lot real quick. Well, what was it kind of like growing up in, in the household, like with all of the music, uh, chat and speak? So you'd, you'd think there'd be a lot of music chat, but, uh, no one in my family actually plays a musical instrument. So Chuck, the, the story is that, um, Chuck's mother had a pawn shop in DC that he worked in. And I might even have the picture here. Um, but while I look this up, Chuck, had a pawn, uh, his mom had a pawn shop in DC and that's where he kind of learned about like, you know, wheeling and dealing and, and sales and just kind of that whole kind of grind. Um, this was in the fifties. Um, and if I can find this picture of it, um, there's a picture of him in the old store and there's like jackets on the wall and there's clock radios, but on the back wall, there's, there's guitars hanging. And so the story I tell myself is that he saw it, you know, saw the business of music happening. He's like, I'm going to open the music store down the street. And the, the kind of the, the mantra and basically what's our mission statement now is music is a happy business. Chuck and Marge thought that music was a happy business. Um, that like the people, you know, you're selling something that people want, that they're passionate about, that they, that lights them up inside, that makes them happy. You're not selling insurance. You're not selling paper. You're not, it's not something they need. They want it, you know? And so music is a happy business. And so that's where, he found his way to it. He wasn't a musician either. Um, my father, my aunt, my uncle, they don't play anything. Uh, but we are, uh, we're like, I guess we think we're cool by uh, attachment of being around the musical industry without ever, ever having actually played a musical instrument. Um, 
but that's how we that's how the family ended up in it is really just because of the the passion and the people it has nothing to do with us actually being prolific musicians ourselves and probably for the better um you know don't don't get high on your own supply kind of thing sure. um <laughs> you know my dad said the one the when i was coming in is like don't don't fall in love with the gear because you may like something it might be the coolest guitar in the world to you but no one cares at all about it and you will make poor business decisions by thinking with your heart sometimes and i have proven that to be true because i have fallen in love with gear that i have no business falling in love with and yeah i've learned that lesson a couple times over i could appreciate that once you've got all you need you have all you need <laughs> yeah yeah. Well, if but you yeah, can I mean, find that photo, I'd love to share it. Uh, I'll find it. it. Yeah, I'll find it somewhere. Um, I know that you had mentioned, you know, it was just like falling in love with the people and the happy business. And um, in previous conversations that you and I have had, you've uh, mentioned a story or two about some of the uh, national and local artists that you've interacted with there at uh, at the store. Do you mind kind of sharing one or two of those with us? Um. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, the one that everyone likes to talk about is uh that guy right there young stevie wonder um would come into the store that's my dad back in the day that's stevie wonder back in the day um so everyone likes to talk about that um i mean you know do they come in all the time no but lizzo was in town a couple of weeks ago they needed keyboards so we sold them keyboards um John Mayer bought a guitar for a website, you know, there, those things kind of happen. But what really gets me excited more is that, um, and I, I don't know if you're going to include this or not, because now this guy is like the worst person in the world and we all hate him. But when we didn't, Kanye West was, was someone who came through these doors and learned how to make music. The video, the story goes is that, you know, when he was young, he came in after school, learned what a sampler was here. and then enough that he remembered that story right like that's a meaningful moment when you learn how to you, you put this guitar in your hands for the first time whatever it is all that to say is that we never know who's coming in the door and who they're going to be in 20 years but the moments they have here could change everything and we have like a book of all these stories that people have sent in you know my first time at chucks i I saw this guitar on the wall and I never thought I'd play it and Chuck pulled it off the wall and put it in my hands and I played this guitar that I'd never thought I'd play in my life. And I knew at that moment that I had to do X or something like that. And it's like the first time you ride a bike, you don't forget it either. You know what I mean? Like the first time you got to try that thing that you never thought you'd try or the first time you played that trumpet and it sounded like angels. You know what I mean? Like they, you have those, those moments happen daily and we may not perceive them or think about them, but whatever happened with that person is going to completely change how they create, operate, aspirations, whatever it's going to be, is going to change in that moment. And that's the that's the really exciting part about people coming through these doors is that like you don't know who who's the next Stevie Wonder, who's the next this or that. We see there have been stock guys that have, you know, come in here. Um uh that are that are drummers in 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 prolific touring metal bands or guitar players in uh, uh, bands like um, uh, Periphery, uh, Animals as Leaders. Um, you know, there are guys that have worked here and gone on to do things like that. There are guys, it just it's all over the place. And and there's there's so many avenues to to be a prolific musician out there. It's cool. We've, we do with DJs, um, DJ Blau, who's like a big DJ, you know, playing EDC headlining stages, things like that um uh bonnie and clyde like there's all kinds of like you know up and down gospel musicians uh td jakes i mean just what whoever they are whatever they are the more exciting ones for me are the ones that you don't know yet but they come in and you just light them up because they never got to see something like this in their lives and this is like a it's not like walk it's almost like walking to like a, a sam's club in a way when you walk in your eyes go like holy crap like how much stuff is in here like when you walk in here you see that it's like a it's like a musical scavenger hunt. Like you just never know what you're going to find in this place. And it's going to spur some creative juice or something. So it's awesome. Yeah. I can't think of a better way to, uh, to end the interview than on that note. I really appreciate that, Adam. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. You bet.